like I go on there to to find shit to to as inspiration. Yeah. Whether it's for me or my clients, and I just get down a rabbit hole and I see a yep. profile and I'm like, oh, this is interesting, and then I'm like, ah, oh, this is procrastinating now. Um, but sometimes you need to switch off, you know. It's just like people want to permanently switch off even yeah. though they're not happy with their lives. But that's what they want to permanently switch off from. They want to, They have their day job. They have something they want to be passionate about, but they just can't connect that bridge between work life, passionate life, and procrastination life. They just want to do procrastination more so. Welcome to The Sevo Show. We are back. It is April 20th. Happy 420, bro. Yeah. yeah. Damn, 420 day. 420 day. Um, we've got Brandon Lee Weston in the studio. Hit me up for the gram. Got some mutuals. We had Afro King on before and you thought you wanted to have a crack at it as well. Brandon is a uh, producer, a music recording artist, everything to do with music, right? Yep, that's pretty much it. More in the hip hop scene, R&B. What's your, what's your go-to genre? Uh, probably like old school, like West Coast hip hop. Yep. That's probably like what I like to make. I'm like pretty versatile, like dipping into like all different types of stuff, yep. like melodic type of rap. Um, more new school type of stuff, drill even. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so just a bit of everything, but most majority of the time is West Coast type yeah. of stuff. If you had two artists that uh, that that made a baby, which was you, who would those two artists be? It would be 50 Cent and Eminem, oh, yeah? for sure. Yeah. Nice. That's nice. like my two favorites. Yeah? Yeah. So uh, growing up, how was that like? What was that like for you? Were you walking around with a Walkman? Um, what, what year, how old are you now? I'm um, 25. 25. Okay, so yeah. you would have had an iPod, <laughs> iPod Shuffle maybe. Um, in, in school, uh, you were listening to those whilst everybody else would have been listening to the probably more the Black Eyed Peas and things like that, a little bit more new school. Yeah, it's a pretty yeah. funny story. Like my, my dad actually listened to the Beatles and like Red Hot Chili Peppers and stuff. So I never even really heard rap um, until like it's pretty, it's pretty out there saying it, but I like um, used to get up to some bad things when I was younger. And I actually stole the iPod. Oi. And that was the first time I ever listened to rap. This iPod was like full of Eminem, 50 Cent, Wu-Tang Clan. And I was like, man, where, where has this been? Like my whole life. <laughs> and like going through what I was going through with that part of my life, like it really helped me because I could relate to the things that they were saying. Yeah. Helped me get through a lot of things. And that's why I thought, oh, I don't know, I'll, I'll give this a crack. So I started writing songs myself. But I couldn't really rap at the time. So I was just like writing all these songs and like, Help me get through things like sort of like a therapy, I guess. And um, and then I was like, I can't sell these because they're so relevant to me. Like, I don't want anyone else rapping them or singing them. So I decided, oh, you know, I'll, I'll teach myself how to rap as well. And yeah, for years and years of like getting hated on and saying, you know, get a real job and all these things, I finally developed my own sound. And yeah, now that brought me over to Perth. I used to live in uh, North Queensland. Yeah. So I've been living here about four years now. And um, yeah, I feel like I've grown a lot since I've moved here. Done a lot back home, but it's just such a small town. It's a place called Mackay yep. in North Queensland. And you can only really get so far where no one else knows you outside of that town, only just where you are basically. So yeah, moving here was a big step. It was, it was pretty hard, but um, it was definitely worth it to, for, for where I am now anyways. Yeah, sweet. So, so back then when you discovered that music on that stolen iPod, did you give it back? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> <Still got it. laughs> no, I definitely didn't. That's right. Um, uh, what made you move to Perth? Um, so my partner's family actually moved here like two or three years before we did. Um, and then I started talking to, to Afro King. And I was just trying to network, just sort of like build, build something over here before I came here to sort of set me up. Um, yeah, and then, then I had an opportunity with um, – this record label is called Concrete Block Records to um to sign on with them. So I ended up moving here with like 500 bucks to my name and didn't have a job or anything. We just moved in with my missus' parents and then um, I signed up with this record label. And then that only lasted about a year before the, the friend that I signed on to like with, he was running the studio for the guy that actually owned the record label. Um, so then we actually sort of left the label together and we started our own like thing together. Um, so now we're, we're just like a, a team. There's me, Afro King, um, another guy, Ghost, Coach. We've got like about five people and, you know, we all do everything in-house. So like we create the video ourselves, 
um, do all the production ourselves, like audio wise, and market and promote ourselves within the group, like just helping each other yeah. with each other's projects. That's awesome. Yeah. No, it's not it's not a competition, you it's a collaboration. Yeah, no, cool. exactly. And how are you finding that success so far? Oh, it's awesome. Like for for the last like three three plus years that I've been with them, I've come further than what you know, I've come in the lot that whole career back in back in Queensland. By yourself. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And it's just being around like minded people. Cause I always had people back home that rapped, but no one ever really took it as serious as me. Like they were just like you know, they'll have a few drinks and be like, oh, yeah, I can, I can freestyle or whatever. They didn't believe it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They didn't believe it, it could be an actual job or an actual career. And and you would have been, what, 20 years of age at that point? Um, when I moved here, I would have been, yeah, almost almost 20. Yeah. Yeah, almost 20 when I moved here. So what, what, made, you, what made you go, no, fuck you guys, I believe in myself, I, I've got something here? I just... I just felt like I was in so deep that I couldn't give up anymore. Like I've been doing it like like all through school. Like when I was in school, everyone would be playing football in the field. I'll be in like the music the room like every lunchtime. Like I had like my own setup at, at school and the music teacher would tell every class like, don't go in this room. Like, cause this is his like, he comes in here every lunchtime. So don't like mess around with his stuff. So that teacher came in clutch. Yeah, yeah. So she was the one that like really believed in me. Um, so I know a lot of people say like the teachers tell them to get a real job and stuff, but this this teacher was like, no, you got something, like keep going. There it is. Yeah. And what about your parents? Uh, my dad, my dad always believed in me, but he was sort of like on the back foot. He's pretty old school, so he's sort of like you know, oh, uh, you know, you need it, you need a backup plan in case it doesn't work out. Like he he believed, but he wanted me to not put all my eggs in that basket. And and did you have a backup plan? Well, at the time I was just working, like I just worked a bunch of different jobs. Um, but in the last three years, I started doing barbering because uh, I love art, like love tattoos, love drawing, love music, like I love every type of art. And I feel like cutting hair is just another type of art. Yeah. So that that was like a trade that really spoke to me. And also network wise, like you're cutting like 20 different people a day in 20 different careers. Um, you can talk to them, tell them you do music. And you maybe do like a hundred or so haircuts a week. Yeah. That's a hundred people you could put your music in front of. Very true. Very true. Yeah, it's yeah. cool. And what about content wise? You say you're creating content um, with your crew. Um, how are you going about that? And, and how has that been uh, reciprocated by, or sorry, received by um, the audience? Yeah. So like we make a lot of stuff like individually and we do come together and we made like a cypher before where we're all together and stuff like that. But at the moment, uh, at the start of the year, you know how hard the rental market is in Perth. Oh, yeah. So we've all, like, pretty much, basically the whole team has lost our um, houses and we're living back with someone because we haven't been able to find a new house. So at the moment, my, our studio is sitting in storage, um, so I haven't been able to record anything. So I've started um, researching and finding other ways I could, you know, um, put, my, put something out there to still engage with the audience. So I started doing like videos, whether it's like motivational speaking, cause I just dropped this trials and tribulations track. Um, just talking about my music, talking about my life, like certain things like that. When I can get the chance to get back into the studio and make more music. Like I have a few things in the bank, but it's, it's, it's so hard, especially not having somewhere to live, having so much going on. It's easier to just make small bits of content when you have the time. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to get that monetization really early. And especially like with rent and all these high costs of living. Oh, I mean, it's man. cheaper it's here ridiculous. than- Imagine <laughs> trying to do this in Sydney, right? Yeah. Damn. Um, yeah. So, um, and you're, you've got a plan? Yeah. Yeah. So would, I'm just staying with my missus' parents again at the moment. Um, just looking for another house. But honestly, the way it's looking, I'm better off just like saving up and buying a house. Because, yeah, it's ridiculous at the moment. I yeah. applied for like 40-something houses. Wow. Nothing. Yeah, Far nothing. Out. Yeah, okay. Um, so now now that you're, you know, back with the, 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 the girlfriend's uh, parents, shout outs, you know. It's yeah, good, good, yeah, shout good to have that. <laughs> yeah, good to out. have that support. Um, and that's, that's critical, right? Like in your 20s, you have the ability to have the leap of faith and just give it a go. And if you have a good supporting network of people, specifically parents that yeah. don't, you know, that aren't too old school, they can go, you know what, give it a go. 
Yeah. You can stay with us as much as you like, but you're you're at least you're trying stuff. Yeah. And that's that's something important that parents need to to realize with their kids is not to tell them that they need to have that safety net and only stick with that safety net. I mean, obviously, if you were living at a home still because you were in your main job to keep you safe, you'd be able to afford rent, right? You'd probably yeah. be able to buy a house right now. Yeah. Exactly. But how much time would you have to work on your passion, your craft? It'd yeah. be a little bit less. So that's 100%. why like in your 20s, you've got a good sweet play right now um, where you can do – the passion a little bit more, not not sit back and relax, obviously. Yeah. And and I think that's what parents fear. They fear failure, but then they fear you not trying, but you're obviously trying and that's what they see and that's what parents want to see. Yeah. And if they're still fearful, then they'll eat humble pie very soon yeah. if you believe in yourself <laughs> enough. So, okay, um, what is your kind of creative process when it comes to writing um, new music? Writing is like... It differs like so much for me. Like one minute I could be like sitting at work cutting someone's hair and I just think of something crazy. Like it just, just comes to me like that. Or other times like I'll listen to a beat and I'll start writing to that. Sometimes I find the beat first and then I make the music like to fit to fit in with the beat. Sometimes I'll make the like the lyrics first and then I'll sort of go back and restructure it once I find a beat. It all depends on like what type of mood I'm in. When, when it comes to me really like with with creativity and like stuff like that it doesn't just doesn't just like you can't just force it like it just comes when it comes like you know you could be at Woolworths doing the shopping and see something on the shelf and be like oh fuck here's a, here's a bar like, <laughs> like and where, just, where how do you how do you keep that do you record on your phone do you keep it in your head or what what's your like so I mostly write on on my phone but I do try to um, eventually put that on onto paper. Or, or write on paper as well. When I get when I have the chance to write on paper, I'd rather write on paper. I know something different about like you actually penning it on on the paper rather than writing it on your phone. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's, it's it, it comes to it it becomes more yeah. realistic if you physically write it down. Yeah, it's sort of like a manifestation. Yeah, you know, you wouldn't go writing them down on your phone. Like that's something that you go in the notebook and write down. Yeah, like your goals and stuff like that. Yeah, so I, I agree. Like, yeah, yeah, same thing with your with your lyrics. So so then you have the writing aspect covered and then you follow that on, you find the beat and then you create it. How long do you kind of um, speculate on a track before you go, yep, yeah, this is fire? Oh, man, that's, that's a hard one because like sometimes I'll write it so quick and then I'll sit there for like a week like reading it or like rehearsing it and I'll end up changing like, like recycling it and, and switching it around and like – so it all depends. Like sometimes it, dep- it depends like what the track has um, to do with me. Like if it's like a really deep track, like this this last piece I bring out, I wrote this thing in one day and I didn't change it. Like, cause it was just like raw emotion. It just came straight from, straight from the heart. And it was like one of the only first songs I've ever written where like I know the whole thing off by heart after writing it wow. without having to go and rehearse it. Yeah. Cause it was like that like that deep yeah. inside me that like it was already there. It was already like written inside me mm. if, that, if that makes any sort of sense. Yeah. So what sort of headspace were you in at the time when you began writing that? So this is um, this was the day that I found out that another one of my mates had committed suicide. Yeah. So um, to, uh, take it back two years ago, my one of my best friends that I grew up with back in Queensland, um, he took his own life and uh, – I think it was two weeks maybe before that, my nana, my nana had passed away. And that was like basically my mum because I grew up not knowing my mum. So like growing up and um, with my nana as like my mother figure, it was really hard losing like two people at once, losing like your nana and your mother. And then two weeks later have your – because like my dad called me like ten times, tell me about my nana and I, and I was at work at the time. And the same sort of, thought, uh, sort of thing happened like two weeks later. So like my, my friend called me like 10 times and I was like, what is, this is something bad. Like the same thing happened like two weeks ago. And then yeah, when I got that call, I like, again, didn't know, didn't know how to feel, didn't know how to process the emotion. And like, honestly, I didn't, I didn't even talk to anyone really about it when I found out like straight away, I literally just locked myself in a room and started writing, found a beat and just started writing like what come to my head. And then the same, that was for the trials and tribulations one, I actually flew back home, 
to Queensland and um, shot a video with my friend's family, like at, at the cemetery. And he actually got cremated. So we shot the video at my Nana's grave. So it was sort of like two things in one. So that, that was a really like deep track, really raw as well. And then, yeah, fast forward back to the um, this year, my friend took his own life again, same sort of thing, all these missed calls. So I made um, a Trials and Tribulations part two. Because after part one, I felt like um, I'm putting this out here to try help somebody, to try help the people that are close to me or people that are seeing this out there um, cope with either mental health or either losing someone to mental health. Um, and then I felt like I'd failed. Uh, not, not so much as it failed, but like, I feel like there's got to be something more I can do. Like, obviously, like, it's still happening. I know I can't, I'm not in control of someone's life or anything like that. Yeah. But maybe I can dive in a bit deeper, show a bit more emotion, like, show, like, it more from my perspective this time of how much it really hurts someone um, to lose someone. Yeah, lots of empathy. Sort of thing. Lots of empathy. Yeah, so that's yeah exactly. A, that's, a, that's a great overall message. Um, and that's what you're kind of, that's your, that's your theme at the moment. Yeah. through your personal life experiences. I see a lot of rappers uh, start off like that, almost all of them. They, they, they speak from the heart. They, they rap about the shit that they've experienced, right? And that's what gets them off the ground. But then I notice them starting to produce all this weird shit that I'm like, what are you doing, man? Like, what happened to you? You've changed. And I know yeah. people change. How do you go to the next stage of your writing provided that hopefully you know these moments are far less in the future you know yeah well I feel like as for what you just said just then I feel like that's that was a bit um of the other way for me like I started out recording not really knowing like what I was doing and I feel like the last year or so I really like started to find myself within the music and I feel like the reason people do that is because they're, they're onto something good and they get onto this hype and then um, they just try and make whatever's whatever's trending because yeah. they're getting so many so many views coming in and they're getting all this attention that they want to try to keep it no matter what they have to do to, to get it. You're not Whether, about that? No, nah, no, nah, I'm, I'm definitely not about that. Like I've always been real with my music. Like at the start, of course, like I was still trying to find myself so I was sort of like piggybacking off different things or different flows or, you know, trying to sound like this because that's who inspired me or influenced me. But now that I've found my own thing and I've got my own thing going, yeah. I feel like this is the way, uh, the path forward. Because something that I stand for is music with a meaning. So that's like basically what I'm all about. So every every song I try to make uh, a story within it, um, whether that be like, I got a song called The Re-Up, where it looks like I'm, I'm dealing drugs, but I'm actually dealing music. So I'm trying to show people that you don't need to deal drugs just because rappers deal drugs, uh, look like they're, you know, trapping and stuff. It's not cool to deal drugs. You're only going to end up in jail yeah. or in prison. Yeah, it's true. Uh, or in jail or in prison, <laughs> in jail or dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I showed you that you could you could um, sell music instead. And I did it in such a way that we're sitting in a trap house, like weighing up CDs. So it looks like it's appealing to that audience of – yeah. That yeah, that thing and showing them that you know I'm selling music, not yeah, yeah. not drugs and like yeah. So all different all different songs. Like mm -hmm. I made a song for a friend back home that's a boxer. His name's Liam Paro. He's um one of the biggest boxers in Australia for his weight division. Um, we come from the same hometown, and that's someone that's always believed in my dream. Even when he started boxing and I started rapping, like I was like, bro, you keep going, man. You're gonna be like you're gonna be something one day. And it was the same sort of thing to me. I love that. So yeah. I I've made, got a few of those. I made a song for him as well. Um, it's called The Prodigy. And the same sort of thing. Um, and I direct all my own music videos as well. Because I feel like as an artist, uh, having someone else direct my music, they've never really been able to um, portray my story yeah. through the music. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, because yeah. I'm the one that's writing it, you yeah. know. So, um, so yeah, I've started like directing my own stuff and I feel like that's... I'm, I'm being able to show a story through the video and tell a story through the lyrics as well. Yeah. And I feel like that's what I want to, moving forward, that's where I want to go with it. That's the direction I want to go. I love that. It's just getting bigger and better with the story writing and bigger and better with the videos and the visuals as well. Love that. So you've got your creative kind of process down packed and you know exactly how you want to head forward. Now the trouble with musicians, the trouble with artists in general, especially, you know, in the creative space, the process of the hustle. 
How are you able to monetize this? Oh man, my my life was jam packed, man. Like, um, so I got I got my job, and the biggest spanner in the works was becoming a parent myself. So having I got two kids, um, a three year old boy and a one year old girl, and that 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 makes it harder because obviously when you're doing music, once you have kids, it's like you want to put them first, especially coming up from a life that was like. I felt like shit growing up, you know. So I don't. I never want to pull my kids through that. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, man, I gotta, I gotta show them that if you got a dream, you got to chase it, no matter how hard, you know, life gets, no matter what life throws at you, you got to keep, keep doing it. So you know, I go to work, I do my kid stuff, and then from like eight, nine o'clock at night till two in the morning is music. On my days off, whatever day, whatever time I got free, when I'm sitting at work and I got no clients. It's writing bars, finding content I can make, doing whatever I can in any gap I get in during the day to do it. Right, and there's no alternative. No, there's no alternative. Yeah, it has to be music. It has to be music. You don't go watch Netflix. No, well, I'm I'm guilty sometimes of of getting one of those one of those power episodes in. Man, I love Fifty Cent and I love his, his TV show. Man, and like, well, I don't I don't. That's research. Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's research. I don't go out there just watching anything willy-nilly yeah. or binge watching stuff. Like, I definitely catch myself up real quick, like, hey, you got work to do, like, you need to stop doing this. How do you get put it down. How do you get that mindset? I don't know, it's just something that just tells me. Like, I could just be watching it, and it could even be a scene in the show I'm watching, and it'd be like, like, some dude's, like, hustling on TV, and I'm like, oh, shit. This reminded me, I gotta get off here and go back to my house. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Um, I'm the same. Like when I'm scrolling on TikTok, um, like I go on there to to find shit to to as inspiration. Yeah. Whether it's for me or my clients, and I just get down a rabbit hole and I see a yep. profile and I'm like, oh, this is interesting. And then I'm like, ah, oh, this is procrastinating now. Um, but sometimes you need to switch off. You know, it's just like people want to permanently switch off even yeah. though they're not happy with their lives. But that's what they want to permanently switch off from. They want to, They have their day job. They have something they want to be passionate about, but they just can't connect that bridge between work life, passionate life, and procrastination life. They just want to do procrastination more so. Yeah. I read this thing recently. It was like uh, grab, a, grab a set of marbles throughout the day or throughout the week. So let's say you have... Uh, 24 marbles in the day um, and then you multiply that by four or five to get your your, week, your weekday marbles. Yeah. Take away eight from each one because that's your sleep. Take away another eight from each one, that's your work. You've got eight left in the day, marbles, yeah. and each one represents an hour. Take a couple of hours out for, you know, eating and spending time with your kids, your loved ones, your, your missus, whatever. You've got six hours left. That's your time or maybe even less. Maybe you've got four hours left because you decided you want to dedicate four hours a day to your kids or whatever. Yeah. Four hours is a lot of time to upskill yourself and they said that if you spend 20 minutes a day, yeah. not even four hours, 20 minutes a day every day for a year, you will be more skilled than I think it's 95% of – the world in whatever that discipline is that you're upskilling yourself in. Yeah, 100%. And that's that's discipline, right? So you're able to use up all those marbles for that passion because you know what you want and it's shown because you've been passionate about it since you were a kid and that passion hasn't stopped. You're one of the lucky ones. Some people don't ever find that passion or they find that passion too late and yeah. they're stuck in their job because they can't afford anything else. So. I think it's a blessing because even though you have kids and it is a spanner in the works, I can't save myself because I don't have kids. Yep. Got a wife. I don't have a mortgage. Um, the rent is fucked. But <laughs> when I was in my 20s, I was living in my, my, my parents' investment house. They weren't living there. So it was like, great. It was the best of both worlds. Yep. But I didn't realize what I had at the time. So I was complacent. I was lazy. And man, at 25, if I knew that, I would be so much more better off. But that path was set. And where I am today, I'm stoked. Seven years later, I'm 32 now. Seven years later, I'm thankful for how it all played out anyway because, you know, we're here. Yeah, Everything's exactly. happens. Everything happens for a reason, right? 
So tell me your setbacks, your overcomings. What's been one of your biggest setbacks so far in your um, career? Still early days. Damn. The setbacks is probably like was move, moving here. I guess it wasn't a setback. It was more of a come up. Like I don't really, I don't really see anything as a setback, to be honest, because I feel like I, I failed, but I've definitely learned from it, and it's taught me something. So let's go, let's go deeper into that. What yeah. has been one of those key moments for you? Um, going back, probably like definitely moving here, and then like growing up without my mom. That was probably like a really, really big one. And my dad was like drinking all the time. So growing up in general, overall was like the hardest bit because I feel like it pulled me back half the race, you know, compared to all the other kids. Because I was, I had like no money, always had to work for everything I got. Like I moved out of, one of the one of the things is like moving out of home. I'm yeah. like 17. Yeah. I had my own house. I was still going to school. I was going to work after school to pay my rent. But there's no other kid at my school that had their own house. And I had my own, own place. I was working you know, doing other things <laughs> that I shouldn't be doing. Yeah. But yeah, you know, and that, I guess that was that was a learning lesson too, but it was it was still a setback as well because other kids are getting brand new cars from their parents. Other kids are getting, you know, houses and stuff like that. Um, so for, for me, I always had to work for everything. So I always had to hustle, whatever it may be. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, I guess this, this year has really been a setback too. Like, like, um, not having a house, feeling like I can't provide for my kids in that, in that sense. And um, with music as well, like not being able to record, um, not being able to shoot videos, but like that's, that's again me. Like I just need to, I just need to push harder. I can go out You're there. You're still showing up though. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still showing up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I feel like if you're going to wake up in the morning um, at this certain time and you got to get to work at this certain time to go make money, why can't you do the same for your dreams? Yeah. Like why can't you why can't you get up at this certain time or stay up at this certain time at night and put that same work that same work you come into work with every every day why don't you come into your dreams with that I love that it's a great attitude but and then when it when you fail you're learning yeah and exactly. you're not giving up and that's how you know you've found a passion well no one's ever like no one's ever got successful from not failing like no one's just accidentally got famous or like not not famous, sorry. People have accidentally got famous, but accidentally got successful. Successful, yeah. yeah. It's the difference between fame and success. Like you yeah. see all these influencers who are famous, quote unquote, and they can't really do anything with that because they don't know what they're doing in the first place. They don't yeah. have a strategy. They don't have a business plan. They don't have a business mindset. Um, but they also don't have any influence in the first place. They're just gone viral for some fucking reason. Like, Perfect examples like... Um like Fetty Wap or Lil Pump, like Fetty Wap drops a whole album that were like had the whole world was getting played around the whole world for like months. Like, fast forward a year later, no one even knows who he is anymore. Never heard of him. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. The one with the, I've the heard of Lil Pump. The seventeen thirty-eight. No, no yeah, <laughs> I've, I've heard about Lil Pump. And Lil Pump, same thing. Like J Cole was telling him um, in an interview, like put your money in in investments, like do this with it. Um, you know, you need to, because it's going to come a time where you're not going to be popping anymore. Like you're not going to be on that hype anymore. Yeah. And fast forward now, he's doing some crazy things like online trying to keep his popularity, but he's he's got nowhere near that popularity he once had. Yeah. People get over it. People get over the mumble rappers. Yeah, exactly. All of them, pretty much all of them from 26. Yeah. They're either 2016, OD'd 2017. Or they nobody's. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, who's, who's, uh, who are the uh, artists that are currently active that are still producing music that you like uh aspire to damn like like new new type of stuff yeah. like joiner lucas is like a really big one because i feel like that's the wavelength i'm going for like if you watch his videos and his lyrics that's sort of like he's on another level from what i'm trying to do like he's got that story with his video, he's got that story with his lyrics and he's just an incredible like all-around storyteller. And you're spitting it out your own way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You got like NF as well. NF, he's really he's really good. He's got that raw emotion um, and just different, different to anything else I really see coming out. And, and he's sort of stuck in that lane, like he knows what works and he's going for that. Uh, and I like that as well. 
as we go back to like getting caught up in the hype type of thing, yeah. he's not following a trend. Like he's found what works for him and he's he's rode with it. That's like what you gotta do. That's what you gotta do. Uh, people say you gotta follow trends, you gotta follow trends. I'm like, but then what? Yeah. If you lose yourself in that process, yeah, nobody. And then if you get known if you get known, like say you, you blew up when you did that trend, then what are you famous for really? You're famous for, for just following yeah. the trend. My, You're not bio, famous for anything. my bio says on my profile on TikTok, um, I am my own niche. Yeah, I like that. I am the niche. And people love that. Yeah, I love um, that. I love that. And, you know, I still get that kind of creative block or, I don't know, it's like imposter syndrome as well and all this shit. And I put out a video. I'm like, I fucking love this video. But then it bombs. It's still kind of like, fuck. This is a banger. What are you talking about? Yeah. You guys don't know. You guys don't know. And then the stupidest shit you'd put up and you're like, oh, I'll just put it up because, you know, why not? And then that goes hard and you're like, oh, do a couple more of those and they all go hard and you're like, oh, but I don't want to do this anymore. But people get sucked into it, eh? Especially with like music as well. That's usually the most natural too. Like the ones where you're like, Oh, uh, like I'll just chuck it out there. Yeah, Because yeah. the ones where you're like trying too hard, I feel like that's the ones that always bomb me out. Yeah, like uh, over editing and even like I'm seeing a lot of um, like even the, the captions, right? Everyone's putting captions in. Yeah. And as we're putting captions in to the videos now, it's fine. But I just hope to hell that it's going to become a downward trend soon when, where people don't really give a fuck about captions. It's just a matter of having a good two first two seconds of – yeah. Oh shit! I vibe with this video. I'm gonna turn it up. I need to see this. Yeah. That's what I reckon. But uh, just oh, it's just a mess right now. Everyone's trying to outdo each other, and and AI's come in. Oh man, everyone's AI. fucked. And I'm like, bro, authenticity is what's gonna save you. If you stay authentic, if you stay yourself, if you show up and you be consistent, you have patience, you will fucking win. Yeah. And that 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 works in music as well. Music is is. You know, like I've got a couple of music artists that I respect because they just stay themselves. They don't give a fuck about this commercial shit. They don't want to make it too poppy, uh, more poppy or, you know, or if the radio station is saying it's too poppy, they're like, fuck you, I like it, you know. Yeah. So it's it's fucked. It's such a creative space, especially to, to make it, you know, to monetize it. Oh, it's been a hard road. And like I'm five years, this is my fifth year now. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. How did I get here? You know? But I can imagine, I can only imagine how difficult it must be for a musician. But it's good that you're pushing more into um, the creative space of music, marketing. Are you making reels? I see you yeah. making some reels. Yeah. Are you making TikToks? Yeah, I started, started making TikToks My as guy. well. My guy, it's good shit, it it's good shit. I gotta do it all, man. I yeah. recently saw a video about East meets West Australia. Are you yeah. coming to that? Are you performing or? Well, I'm, I'm definitely coming to it. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm a finalist and they, they're running this competition at the moment. Um, so this will probably be up way after East, East Mate, meets West Mate, you know what? You know what? I, I will try my best to put it up before that so that we can somehow help. But yeah. um, East versus West, May 6th. Um, yeah, East Meets West, May 6th, uh, Metro City. Yeah, Metro City. I am down south on a week weekend break, a much-needed yeah. weekend break. It's funny to say that because it was just only a month after I come back from NYC. Yeah. But, man, this this game is fucked. <laughs> like like mentally fucked. It's, yeah. it's hard. Like having help now, we've got Ryan um, and, you know, trying to make his life easier but also have him, you know, fall in love with the process and learn and not run away. And then uh, a couple of other blokes, you've got Jamal and Kale doing the editing and just making sure that they love it. That's the, the transition from solopreneur to entrepreneur is to create a team, manage the team, have the team enjoy their shit and everybody wins, everybody grows together. Yep. And like being, being like the, the steerer, the captain or whatever of the ship, which is the company, we're all working for the company. Right, yeah. But then everybody is invested into the idea, and yeah. then plays their role. It's it sounds like a, an amazing game, but it's mentally draining. Yeah. But the nine to five, couldn't think of anything worse. Yeah, exactly, yeah. man. That's that's another reason I got into the barbering, because like ever since I was a kid, 
I just never, never want I just don't want to work for someone anymore. Yeah. I feel like barbering is like another, another tool of entrepreneurship. Yeah. It's an outlet. Yeah. yeah. Cause like, I don't need to ever have a job. Like I don't know if you like have to apply for a job as long as I got hair to cut. Yeah. What do you cut? I cut at the Villia barbershop. Yeah. So we got like about eight stores oh, wow. and I'm like about two months off finishing my degree. So cool. I've, I went to school, uh, barber school and done that. And I've already qualified for that. Well, you have to do three years in a shop to be fully qualified. Yeah. So I'm about two months off um, full of Let's fully go. qualifying. Are you making content of you cutting hair? I was waiting for that. Cause like- Waiting was, for what? Well, I was waiting, waiting to um, when, I, when I finish so I can really like, cause I felt like I wasn't good enough yet. And when I, when I finish, I want to like start my own shop up and start, and start from there, like start from, from scratch. Like I've, I've done a lot of content, like shot it, but I haven't put anything up yet. So I sort of want to, once I've finished and I, I start my own thing and I start rolling everything out and I can show you the stuff back yes. from when I very first started yes. as well. Yeah. You've got some, you got some receipts. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's good. I didn't want to put that up yet because I'm working in a shop at the moment. So like, at the same time, I didn't want to not, not bring not not bring them in clients, but I wanted to. I knew one day I was going to do my own thing, and I wanted to save that for that that time when I start my own thing. Yeah, and I can go back and start from the beginning. Dope. Yeah. Dope. Dope. I'm I'm super excited for you. Yeah. And I think that is a good hybrid that you can do where you can you know you could act it out, get get permission from everybody and all that stuff, but you know rap as you're cutting. Yeah, I've got a song called Barbershop. Let's do it. I, <laughs> that's, I, that's one there where I actually yeah. have M cutting in it. Yeah. So we shot that. I even shot that with the boss like of my shop. Yeah. So we got eight stores in Perth and he owns all of them. Yeah. So he actually was down to be in the video as well. Yeah. Can you can you freestyle rap off 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 whatever? Have an object or whatever? Uh, Are you I quick mean, enough? I, I can't. I'm not, I'm not asking, like, not asking yeah, you to yeah. do it today, but yeah. um have you heard of McShane? Yeah, yeah Steve? McShane, yeah. 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 He was on. He was on the show as well, and he's incredible. The yeah. the way that he just just comes up with something like straight away. Yeah, it's a talent, and I'm just like, I wonder if you could do that with barber, barber yeah. shop, right? Um, you probably you know write something in at, at the start, but it would be so cool if uh, the uh, the client that comes in, their name, their favorite hobby. And, yeah, you know, maybe the event that they're going to, and that's where they're getting their hair cut, and just freestyle sort of, about that. That would slap. That's sort of what the song's about. Yeah. If you listen to the song, it's sort of like a conversation to the client. Yeah. So it was like I've heard other barbershop songs where people are talking about going to the barbershop, but I never really heard a barbershop song from like a barber's perspective. Yeah. Of them like talking to the client. Well, how many rappers are barbers? Yeah, not many. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Not many. Yeah. 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 So, um, what does the future hold for you now? What is what is your kind of next twelve months? What are you hoping? Twelve months. Um, what are you manifesting? Well, I, I want to drop my debut EP. Yep. So I've never, never dropped the project. I've only I've dropped, dropped singles and videos and stuff like that. So I got a debut EP that I've I've got fully written. I'm just waiting on to to record. I got a few songs in the bank as well. But so yeah, drop drop that definitely in the next year. Um, and yeah, just spend more time with my kids. Obviously, coming up to the end of my apprenticeship, I want to start planning out my own shop. Um, I actually want to do, I don't want to give too much away, but I'm, <laughs> I want to do like a hip hop inspired barber shop. So like, actually have people performing inside the shop and stuff like that. Oof, that'd and be like good. actually putting on for the scene. So whether it's like playing music videos in the shop on rotation or like doing events in the shop, hosting events, people coming through from like interstate on tour. Oof. Like That's where like that, that East meets West kind of vibe. Yeah. yeah, that would be dope. Because you know, it all, it all goes down at the barbershop. Yeah, yeah, you talk, yeah. It you does. talk your shit at the barbershop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you watch the movie Barbershop. Yeah, yeah, before, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what I mean. That's what I'm going for. Like yeah. those vibes. Yeah. My favorite ever barber barber scene is uh, the one um, from with Eddie Murphy uh, coming to America. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah, that yeah, scene yeah. where they're all in there talking shit, and uh, <clears throat> Eddie comes in. And he's still got his big rat's tail. Yeah. Comes in and he's just like, a haircut, please, with his accent. And the guy's just like looking at him like, grabs his rat's tail, cuts it off. That'd be nine dollars. <laughs> oh, <laughs> gets me every time. Oh, bro. Oh, I need that. Sh need I've that actually drive. watched that movie. I watched that movie in ages. Oh, I it's, it, I always, I loved it. And, and every time I go to New York, because I see Queens, because that's where they stayed yeah. uh, in the movie, I'm like, I don't, I, I want to go visit, but. 
that's the Wild West in New York. You want to go like, yourself a big velvet uh, like <laughs> mink coat, eh? <laughs> and walk down the street. <laughs> nah, I'll get stabbed. But um, I went to I went to Bronx, and yeah. uh, I, I don't stray off far from the tracks. But uh, yeah, it's I, I feel like not many people will fuck with me there because of, of my height. But uh, yeah, yeah, I I don't want to like stir up anything, but I want to get to know the locals. I yeah. want to get to know their story. I met this guy in uh, Brooklyn. His name's Kevin James, and he told me about his 15-year uh, prison sentence stint. Yeah. And he said that he, prison saved his life because all his friends back in the day before he got incarcerated, they're all dead. That's crazy. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. I, I, that's, why I met, that's why I love doing this. So just learn people's stories and see how they think and how they got there and obviously give value to the people that are listening because I didn't – realize how many people actually listen like there's stats online that I can see the numbers but it's the people what they what they tell me and, and what each episode and yeah. how they bring it like take it in oh yeah exactly. gets me motivated right exactly um so you said 12 months what about five years what's your big one what's your what's your ultimate goal well ultimate goal is like so making it for me or becoming famous as such for me is a bit different, I guess, to other rappers or other people that are going for like that superstardom. Like for me, it's just being able to do music full time, be able to not have to worry about money, take care of my family, buy myself a nice house, nice car. Yeah. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. I definitely want to get a low rider though. I love I love low riders. <laughs> I saw that photo with you and the, yeah, man, the pink Cadillac. That was yeah, sick. That was actually... Funny story about that pink Cadillac. That pink Cadillac is from um, Fast and Furious. Really? So I put up a photo. Oh, dope. I put up a photo and I said, who did it better, me or Ludacris? And uh. there's a picture with Ludacris with the same car. Oh, wow. So some dude in Sydney bought that car and then they sent it over to my friend over here and he's actually redoing the whole the whole car. Cool. So I was the last person that will probably ever get a picture with that car. Oh, <laughs> now I want a photo with it. Yeah. That's dope. That's so cool. Um Kids, kids that are coming up wanting to get into music, maybe even rapping or producing beats or whatever, what advice do you have for them? Just be yourself, honestly. Like BLW, it stands for Brandon Lee Weston, but it also stands for be yourself, lose never, win always, which is something I stand by as well. Like if you just be yourself, you can't lose. Like because um, if, if, you, if you're trying to follow trends and you end up blowing up and you end up getting big, then that's what you're gonna be big for is following trends. But you know, why be the why be the next one for or the next um, you know young and lips when you can be the first BLW or the first you know wh whoever you are. Preach, man, there. absolutely yeah. love that. Yeah, that's that's spot on, man. You social media as well. You start creating content. You start creating whatever. Yeah. And then one hits and then you start to do more of that and it hits and it hits and it hits and you start going viral, you start getting more followers. Yeah. One day, I guarantee you, you will stop loving that trend. You'll stop loving that theme. Yeah. You get bored, you want to do something else. The worst thing that can happen is other people go, oh, oh, no, go back to what you were doing before and you listen to them. Don't listen to them. Yeah. Do not succumb to being a circus performer. Yeah, exactly. You know? It's hard to it's hard to like yeah. block block the people out. Like um especially when your friends are telling you. But sometimes man, they're not your friends. Those people that are telling you like if some these days, man, if someone tells me like, nah, that's not possible or like, nah, I don't reckon you should do that, then I I'm either cutting them people off or I'm like sort of separating my dreams from my friendship yeah. with that person. Like I won't bring my dreams up to them again. Yeah. If they're a really close friend of mine and they don't think that that's possible, yeah. then I'll, I'll go. I'll find some people that have a, a like mindset, the same as me. But um, the probably the biggest thing I could say to other younger artists as well is like the, the timing as well. Like you don't need to be on a hype when you write something and be like, "Oh, this is so dope!" Like, and then make a phone video of it um, and put it up on Facebook. Like, really, really put some time into it. Like go over the song, get immersed in the song, like actually read the song and listen to your own words and think like, why did I write the song? And then you go to a studio, you know, put some hours in and actually get it recorded professionally. 
ask the producer, you know, what are they doing to the track? Ask them, why are they doing this to the track? Help, help them, help to find out like why they're making you sound this this type of way. Yeah. Um, Cause it'll help you when you're rehearsing and when you're trying to find your own sound as well. And, um, and you know, put put some put a budget away for a video. Doesn't have to be anything crazy. You don't even need a camera these days, man. You can use an iPhone. Just selfie that shit. Yeah, you can yeah. use an iPhone to shoot a music video. Mm. Like it doesn't have to be a camera. Like just go out, shoot some nice scenes, like in a in a city or something, or in a car park. That's it. Or if a storytelling you want to do, you know, tell a story, get a bit creative with it. But it doesn't cost like oh, I'm in a leg like people think it does. Right. To make something crazy. Yeah, you gotta start though. You gotta yeah, you gotta start. Yeah. That's the other thing. All starts. Yeah, you can't can't all have a yeah. a setting like this. You know, it's not cheap either. And yeah, that's no, it's perfect advice, bro. And you want to find a passion, and you showcase that passion as often as you can with whatever you have available at the time. And like with the song, come back to the song thing. While I was an artist, music artist. I would go to the end game and go, this song is popular one day. Everyone wants to hear it. I go on tour. I go to 60 cities in space of six months or something. I don't know. Would I be stoked to be singing this song every fucking night? And if the answer is no, it's kind of a good song. Yeah. Even if it hits. Yeah. Maybe you like it at the start. That's why you wrote it, right? But actually so many artists are like, fuck this song. I can't be fucked anymore. Yeah. Well, you can, yeah, you can see in the artists that um, that they're just not they're not there anymore. They're like fuck this yeah. shit. Yeah, no, exactly. They're just brain dead. Especially the old school ones, man. Yeah, like the old school R and B and like yeah. rap artists. They're like shit. I gotta go out to Australia and perform the same song from nineties again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when they want to play their new stuff, nobody likes it anymore. Yeah, and then no, exactly. that's kind of like, and then if they haven't invested any money to. Um, to their, you know, investments and shit, they're going to have yeah. to keep performing. I think another crazy thing like these days is um, is like people's attention span. Like music isn't what it was, like even when I first started, which, you know, I remember being 16 years old and like going uptown and like standing at the front of the club and selling CDs to people. And like music these days is so hard because one, like as an artist, you're not making anything off Spotify. You make a very little off YouTube. Yeah. Um, the only thing you can really rely on is shows and merchandise. Yeah. But at the same time, people's attention span is so small these days. Like I remember being a kid watching a music video that'll go for like seven minutes. I go watch the whole thing front to front to back. These days, you can't even watch a TikTok for thirty seconds. No. If exactly. you're not, if you're not like impressed in the first two seconds, you you switch into the next one. That's why you go for volume of the yeah. amount of content you put out. If you force yourself in. But also, you know, talk to the right, talk to the right audience, yeah. and you have intent, and you love what it is you do anyway. That scaled content will help, yeah. and the paid content doesn't work either. It, it like you put so much money into it, yeah, it'll hit, it'll hit, but the chance of it like going further than that, especially after the ad spend finishes, very low. That's yeah. what I see anyway. Yeah, so. no, it's true. Like you get the views, you get everything like that, but it's it's all anyone ever wants is organic engagement. Mm. They just want people to, they just want to find the people that resonate with their music. That's right. People that are going to stick around and listen to the rest of their songs because they relate to everything that this person's saying. That's it. That's it. That That's influence. Yeah. That's influence. Right, well, uh, on, the, on that note, it's been an absolute pleasure to get to know you and learn about how you do things. I feel like I can – nah, I can't start rapping. But yeah. <laughs> um, where can we find you? How do we How do we listen to your stuff? Um, so you can find me at BLW The Rapper on Instagram. There's a link there to all my stuff. But my Spotify is BLW. Um, my YouTube is BLW. I just dropped a new track called Trials and Tribulations Part 2 um, with the lovely SBL. So she sung on that as well. Um, so go check that out. The video is on YouTube. It's a really deep, meaningful track um, that I keep close to my heart. And yeah, I hope, hopefully you guys will check out my music. And, you know, thank you so much for having me today. Pleasure. Make sure you listen to the rest of the podcasts. Um, 
and check out his TikTok because it's fire, man. Yeah. You'll be you'll be scrolling <laughs> as well. You, just back to our last point, you'll be scrolling all night and you'll forget to do your dreams. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Uh, shout outs to Bright Tank for being the sponsor of this podcast, uh, Bright Tank Brewing Co. out in East Perth. Shout outs to Matt and the boys and girls uh, all involved. The ginger beer slaps. <laughs> the IPA, it slaps for people that like IPA. This is going hard. This is 1.9 standard drinks there in one can. Damn, lucky I got the Uber here then. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, keep an eye out on the Bright Tank side. Um, they're very heavily involved with hip-hop um, side of things. And, uh, yeah, a uh, couple of fire fire questions before we go. Yeah. Um, favorite album of all time? Uh, Get Rich with Dutch Iron. Hey, first concert you ever went to? Oh, wow. Justice Crew. Justice yeah. Crew, nice. Yeah. One whole pass of a female artist that you just you just take her home. One whole pass. It's no the product, bro. Okay. I don't okay. know if you even know who that is. Nah. <laughs> just uh, research it. <laughs> one, uh, no hate, just just because it's it's funny. One artist you think, how the fuck did they become an artist? What the fuck? Fuck. Six nine. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I sort of get it though. <laughs> I sort of get it, but I still think, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which uh, actor would you like to portray you in your uh, uh, biography one day? Oh, damn. That's a that's such a hard one. It's got to be Keanu Reeves. <laughs> awesome John Wick shit, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Not uh, Pete Davidson or something like that? Nah. Nah? It's too funny, man. I'd just be like... <laughs> He needs to be on the ball, man. Realistic. A bit more serious. Yeah, yeah. A bit more serious. Exactly. Yeah. Um, if your mum was listening, what would you tell her? Oh, for me personally, I tell her to turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. You know what to do. Uh, link in the description with all the shit. Um, if you like the episode and you're listening specifically on Spotify, you can leave a comment in the thoughts uh, and your thoughts in the comment box thing that there's a feature now if you're listening on youtube watching on youtube please leave a comment like subscribe all that shit and uh yeah catch you next time thanks again brennan i thank you for having me <laughs> as always good thanks <coughs> oh, fuck <laughs>